Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Peter Hall, and I'm here because I've been in overall direction of the Sintrofa program for the last four years. And it's a great pleasure to welcome back so many old friends with whom we spent so many good hours together collaborating on this program and celebrating the formal end of Sintrofa, but more of that in a minute. Um, I'd also like to welcome many uh, distinguished guests who've um, given up uh, very valuable time uh, from their daytime jobs uh, to hear what we've got to say today. Welcome. Now, I have to tell you also um, that um, this uh, is going to be a story a little like um, the uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, saga. Uh, as you uh, will all remember, um, Sherlock Holmes died at the Reichenbach Falls, uh, but miraculously uh, reappeared for a whole new series of stories. And we hope also not exactly to plunge down um, a waterfall, uh, but um, to uh, have uh, another year at least of life uh, in a program we are calling Sintrofa Plus. Uh, more of that in a minute. Um, first of all, uh, for those of you who are new to our program, uh, and um, apologies to those who've seen some of this before, um, I'd like just to tell you some main features of Sintrofa. Uh, five regions, five member states, uh, 14 partners, um, uh, formerly um, a, a program that's lasted five years, but actually four and a bit, uh, we're one of the larger Interreg 4B uh, projects and um, uh, very much uh, concerned uh, with um, peripheral regions with poor transport connections. Uh, what were our key aims? To demonstrate the potentials of new lower cost uh, transport technologies, um, uh, especially but not exclusively, that's important, tram trains and uh, to um, project, our high, uh, promote high quality interchanges and improve and strengthen the business case, uh, um, uh, uh, cases for these um, uh, projects in uh, peripheral regions which often don't score well on conventional cost benefit analysis. Um, where are our five uh, our case studies? They're all in what we call peripheral regions and some of you will remember this famous diagram from 20 years ago, often repeated, um, from Spiekermann uh, and Wegener, um, uh, of the peripherization of the periphery, a marvellous term. And we believe it to be true that as the European high-speed rail network uh, develops, um, so uh, areas uh, outside it uh, may find themselves relatively even more peripheral in relation to the core. Now, Many of such areas are outside the famous Pentagon, but not all of them because you can find peripheral regions, including some of ours, which are what we call holes in the Pentagon. Uh, and thus, um, uh, of our regions, West Flanders, Valenciennes, uh, and, um, and uh, Nijmegen, uh, and, um, uh, and uh, even um, uh, Nordhessen, are inside the Pentagon, but for various reasons, uh, peripheral, and here are the regions. And I'm going now to give you a very brief um, uh, trip through uh, these uh, five regions to show what each of them has been doing. Uh, we call Nordhessen or uh, Kassel our mental region because this is the place, the second in Germany after Karlsruhe, where they introduced the tram train, the city blue tram on the left, the uh, silver tram train on the right. And these trains, or trams, uh, connect the uh, core of Kassel, the main shopping street uh, here, uh, uh, the Obra Königstrasse, uh, to the uh, rest of the region. And here you see uh, that same tram um, uh, has taken down its pantograph, has gone on diesel power out into the countryside to a small town, Wolfhagen, where it's just turning round to go back to the city. This was the model for us when we started Sintrofa. Um, uh, but um, we wanted to apply it in other places, particularly 
Blackpool in northwest England on the Fylde coast where you had a heritage tram service uh, now um, supplemented and in fact replaced by new trams. Here they are in the depot ready to go out and uh, connecting those trams uh, to a, a railway line uh, with a very, very poor service, the South Fylde line, uh, as a tram train on uh, the Castle model. It didn't quite happen, as we'll see in a minute, but it might still happen. Our third region, West Flanders, on the coast of Flanders, where you have a magnificent 70-kilometre uh, coast tram, modernised, superb service, which has had major effects in regenerating that coast. And here, uh, the project has been to extend that tram a short distance inland to uh, um, two inland cities where uh, it is hoped uh, to create new interchanges. Our, our fourth example, rather different, Valenciennes in northeast France, an old uh, coal mining and industrial region, uh, already one very successful tram line. The project has been to build a second tram line, uh, north and then east, and uh, using a revolutionary technology um, of single track operation uh, with a new signaling system and that uh, at least half of it has been completed and is just coming into operation at this point uh, successfully. Um, uh, another great example of new technology being applied to the regeneration of a region. The fifth example on the, um, in the Netherlands, uh, Nijmegen, uh, and I make an is um, in uh, the East Central Netherlands and here the project was to um, a, a open up an old disused railway line as a tram or tram train line across the border uh, to Kleve in, uh, in Germany. Uh, uh, unfortunately this vision has not yet uh, been um, completed and uh, there are, I'm afraid, some doubts about it, which you'll hear about uh, from Rob in his presentation this afternoon. Um, some key issues that have emerged. What have we learned? First of all, uh, technology. Um, uh, Castle, as you'll see in a minute, uh, pioneered or, or, or uh, interoperation, well, Karlsruhe had started, um, that is track sharing with heavy rail. Uh, but the big question we have found is um, interoperation versus seamless transfer to bigger hubs. I'm sorry, I've gone in the wrong direction. Um, and uh, the second, uh, that question of interchange. Uh, and here, uh, a point has emerged of what we call thick versus thin links. Thick links with good service, uh, frequent service through big stations versus thin service, including tram train service, on lines with a, a poorer uh, frequency and then a less attractive service. Um, uh, the work in Blackpool has demonstrated that point, as you'll see. Uh, thirdly, the potential to trigger regeneration and new development. It seems to us that this is one of the most important points of all. The real point about these um, technologies is whether they uh, realize potential in lagging regions. Fourthly, investment in the routes. Um, uh, we've been studying intensively the practice of different uh, European countries. And our final, uh, uh, some of our final reports, still to be put out on the web, uh, come from Tom Worsley in the audience and Chia Lin Chen, who are investigating uh, 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 appraisal practices in different EU countries. Let's go through these issues in turn. Interoperation. Castle, earlier Karlsruhe, pioneered interoperation. Nijmegen concluded that the tram rail option was better than interoperation uh, because uh, Deutsche Bahn uh, didn't like the idea of trams sharing their tracks in Kleber, although it had done so in Karlsruhe and in Kassel. In West Flanders and in Valenciennes, it wasn't even a, an option. Um, it appears that um, uh, in Valenciennes, SNCF, or RFF, we should probably say, uh, does not like interoperation very much, at least so far. And in um, uh, West Flanders, we have the issue that the Kuss tram, that wonderful coastal tram, is a meter gauge tram, not easy to run over 1.435 um, standard uh, European gauge tracks. In the Fylde Coast, 
uh, very interesting, the tram extension to a re big rail hub was the strongest option. Uh, Interoperation on, on the uh, other route is still an option and we hope to consider it, uh, but it <coughs> depends on our ability to establish that there are wider territorial benefits. So the key issue, interoperation versus seamless transfer. Um, here's um, uh, what happens in Kassel. Here's our party, Evelyn, sorry I grabbed you without your <laughs> permission, uh, getting off the tram, we're all getting off the tram, and down the slope, there goes the tram, and a minute later, turn round and snap this picture of an ICE going through on the same tracks. That's interoperation for you. By the way, a freight train came through about one minute after that. Uh, that's how they do it in uh, Kassel. Uh, but in other places in Europe, and now I'm venturing outside northwest Europe, um, if you look at uh, Grenoble, a magnificent tram system, here's the TGV, here's the tram, and if you're a sufficiently athletic helmet, that's the sort of thing you like to do. You could just leap over this uh, fence and straight onto the tram. Might be a little dangerous, but uh, could be done. Um, and uh, another example, come south to Montpellier, and here are two of the tram routes uh, crossing each other in front of the station, the stations behind us, turn round and there's tram number three in this bizarre green nautical livery just opened uh, a year and a half ago, turning round in front of the station. What easier than just to walk out of this station now being reconstructed and onto your tram? This is the choice there. Second, uh, motive power. <coughs> Nordhessen was interesting to us because, as you've seen in Wolfhagen, that tram changed from uh, DC to diesel power uh, on that one line, but other partners have rejected hybrid technology and didn't even perhaps consider it. A helmet uh, in Nordhessen, I think now you would decide if you were doing it again, perhaps you wouldn't even need to do it because advances in uh, electrical technology would make it possible to run that uh, trial, um, uh, uh, your, your, that service uh, uh, on uh, DC power. The UK national trial, Tim is sitting in, uh, well, Tim in the front row, uh, and you considered a hybrid trial on one line, but you switched it. And in any case, the new EU emissions regulations have made that tram you saw non-conforming, ironically. So although they can continue to use it on that one line, they couldn't use it elsewhere. And this is very relevant to Blackpool, where the South Fylde line remains non-electrified. But also, um, and this is one of the most important and exciting developments, new transport technologies over the uh, recent years of our project. Um, to name only um, uh, uh, three, here is supercapacitator technology demonstrated by our Chinese hosts at the Shanghai Expo 2010. These buses look like ordinary buses. They're not. They're picking up electricity at each stop from a little overhead thing, and they are running on to the next stop autonomously, having charged themselves. A second uh, uh, alternative, battery technology has taken enormous strides. Here's a Stadler tram. Well, it's actually a, a computer simulation of what it will look like going through the Englischer Garten in Munich um, when it gets there. And on the test track uh, uh, outside Berlin in May 2011, uh, they established a world record of running 16 kilometers on battery before the tram stopped. That's not recommended, but um, there's a, an example of what can be done now, which we could never have considered at the beginning of Sintrofe. A third example, which we looked at very seriously, uh, Prime Move, this is a Bombardier system, picking up electricity by induction from under the tracks. Big track in Augsburg, uh, test in Augsburg in Germany, uh, they in fact have not proceeded with that, but it remains a very interesting technology. Just three examples. And then another example, you've already seen this picture, of innovation, the Valenciennes single track system, alternating operation, thus bi-directional, signal controlled, the first in Europe, very exciting, go there and ride on it. We got a special license thanks to our hosts who uh, pulled out all the stops to get us on that tram in November, and it's an amazing experience. 
and uh, with big cost savings. This is a uh, cost saving, but it can also go on narrow urban streets, very characteristic of so many of uh, our European historic cities, uh, without um, the big environmental impact you have if you try to put in um, a, 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 a double track system. Very exciting. So now the next item. Um, do you really need uh, to have a, 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 a tram train uh, uh, operating uh, on a, a branch line, a thin route, uh, or would it be better to go through uh, to the big station uh, and interchange there? And, uh, and we're developing a, a report on European good practice uh, in, on interchanges Eveline, uh, our, our um, uh, West Flanders partners are developing that part of the project. And um, another uh, topic which we thought was going to be very important at the beginning but somehow disappeared, the relation to regional airport hubs. Many of our regions have small airports, uh, some of them in commercial operations, some not, where they hoped uh, to develop especially low-cost flying. What we did discover in these low-cost operations that m the passengers tend to come from a wide areas, mainly on leisure trips and with baggage, um, uh, and uh, rather unsuitable for public transport. And further, uh, a, a really rather uh, daunting case, in, uh, in Nijmegen and Kleber, the airport on the German side, Weizsa or Niederrhein, is a Ryanair airport uh, where the uh, airport operators are really dependent on parking charges because Ryanair have done such a good deal for them, not for the airport, that they totally depend on parking charges. So they told us they don't even like the idea of a tram train coming in their direction. And uh, 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 Rob will be talking more about that case uh, this afternoon afternoon. The development regeneration potential, now this gets interesting because uh, uh, Pierre Leconte, who was our guest last night at the dinner, um, which many of you enjoyed, uh, uh, has pointed out uh, uh, that um, uh, 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 Coxider at the uh, uh, end or west end of the line has achieved extraordinary urban regeneration um, and why not, for instance, uh, along the file coast of Lancashire. Um, Valenciennes has made its first line part of a new university expansion and now plans a major technopole next to the university while the line two that goes through a rather depressed area is being promoted as a development corridor. Uh, Kassel um, uh, would like to test the feasibility of Regio Tram developments to major employment areas. I'm talking uh, to Helmut over breakfast um, we have now an exciting possibility for uh, a, 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 an extension study looking at the impact of a new uh, uh, tram technology, double length trains, trams uh, serving the university and in fact bringing the regional tram for the first time into the university campus. Um, just to show you the potential for regeneration, here's the whole length of the West Flanders Coast Tram and an enlargement of the western end uh, uh, which I, 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 uh, on the uh, lower slide uh, with um, Coxida, if I can find uh, my pointer, yes I can, uh, at the uh, western end here before it turns round. And here's what this looks like. Um, if you come into Coxida, lots of new development everywhere, new hotels, new apartment blocks, many of them second homes, uh, possibly for some, many of them for people who work in Brussels and want to live by the seaside at the weekend. This is a picture postcard, obviously, but it just shows you the flavor of the development. Uh, 20 Michelin restaurants, including one of them with one star, two stars, sorry, um, and even uh, a new uh, train station at the back of the town. Uh, this is the one uh, they hope uh, to connect to uh, the tramway extension and indeed uh, 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 the Sintrofa project uh, provided ERDF funds uh, for this magnificent new station. Um, so um, 
development regeneration uh, potential, we've, uh, we are, uh, we've had a major study made for us by uh, French consultants, CETE. Uh, we're still awaiting the absolutely final report that will go onto the web fairly soon. And they have looked at six studies, um, uh, uh, case studies across Europe. Um, and we're now undertaking, Chilin is undertaking a much wider assessment uh, and we already have Tom Wurz's report. All these major reports will be going onto our website very shortly. So um, we um, uh, are beginning to understand, particularly through Tom's report, that everywhere cost-benefit analysis is the rule for investment decisions, uh, but the weight of cost-benefit analysis varies somewhat between one European member state and another. Um, Tom's report shows that the uh, countries are converging somewhat in their uh, uh, assessment practices. Most countries do consider this critical question of uh, potential for economic growth in disadvantaged regions, but not all impacts can be valued, as I'm sure you all know. And um, there is a big difference here, we've discovered, very important, more centralised countries that centralise their budgets, like notoriously the UK, tend to place greater weight on cost-benefit analysis. Um, uh, those with devolved regional or local government uh, tend to place greater weight on economic development potential. And France, the extreme example, which has a hypothecated tax, the versement transport, uh, tends to put local uh, and urban uh, development potential at the forefront. It starts there and only later, much later, uh, takes into account benefit cost considerations. We consider this a very important um, uh, emerging message and one which it's not clear whether France is right or the UK is right or somewhere in between is right and um, uh, this remains a big open question. Key emerging messages, therefore, lower cost technology solutions. The tram train has potential, but a, a conventional tram to a big rail hub can be better. Um, rapidly evolving technology opportunities. We found with these new technologies constantly coming that we've been shooting at a moving target, struggling to keep up with understanding what is happening. And we think there's room for a great deal more testing of these new technologies. Seamless interchange to major hubs, um, essential. Uh, and uh, by the way, we have a follow-up pro uh, project which I'll be introducing immediately after the coffee break, synaptic. Ep economic appraisal, cost-benefit analysis often positive, but insufficiently strong to establish the case in weaker peripheral regions like the ones we've been studying. A need to recognize the wider territorial and economic benefits. Financial feasibility. Even good cases face long delays due to uh, the austerity era following the 2008 crash. Need, we need to learn from innovative financing models which have been used in the UK and elsewhere. Political feasibility, a key success factor. Without going into our uh, setbacks, and we've had a few, um, we found that the political factor has often weighed very uh, big indeed. Projects that we thought were going through smoothly have had problems uh, because they have run into political issues locally without going into details. Therefore, governance, uh, a, a strong devolved con context, particularly a city regional system of gov governance with adequate capacity and powers, appears to be the best model for promotion of these schemes. That's been true in Kassel, for instance. In, in Germany, the Verkehrsverein model works well. In France, uh, the Communauté Urbaine, the city region governance system, has been very important in promoting big uh, local transport schemes. Organization, interagency silos are still there between transport departments and other departments, uh, centrally and also locally, and these present a big issue. Therefore, um, the good news is, and hence the Sherlock Holmes point, uh, we are putting forward to the uh, Joint Technical Secretariat uh, in 10 days' time um, a, a Sintrofa Plus uh, 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 program uh, with the continuing aim of...
navigating the regions, what we call the Heineken model. Not all of you will know this, uh, even uh, younger UK people, but this was a very successful uh, program by Heineken who said, um, this is the beer that reaches other parts that other, the parts that other beers won't reach. We are saying we want transport that reaches the parts that other transport won't reach. And if we are successful, everyone cross fingers, uh, this will run from June 14 to June 15 with two main themes. Number one, low cost solutions, stressing these new technologies and their potential uh, contribution. And secondly, uh, the new appraisal framework, uh, which we are busy developing even now, one that will uh, better recognize the wider territorial benefits outside a conventional cost-benefit analysis. And um, the, here, uh, we are very much dependent on an important new report from the UK, uh, the Network Rail Ruts report of last summer, uh, which has looked at tram trains here in Karlsruhe. Uh, this is our national trial in Sheffield uh, of the tram train. Uh, it's looking at battery power. Uh, this is the uh, Plasma Senat in, in, in Nice. Uh, and uh, it's looking at what is called the Paisley Canal solution, which is discontinuous electrification. We consider this has major potential implications for cutting costs on uh, new electrification schemes. This could work uh, on the Fylde Coast, and there the story is uh, that we have switched on the Fylde Coast uh, from promoting tram train to promoting a short link to our big hub uh, at um, uh, North Station. Uh, we, sorry, yes, um, uh, this is our North Station hub, and a major regeneration around that train station this was photographed with uh, Dave Simper in, in the photograph 18 months ago. I went through it uh, on Thursday night and it's finished effectively, brilliant. Uh, but the, it's left the South Fylde line, that uh, sad line, still unelectrified. And we want to consider the potential here uh, for different solutions, including uh, 25 kV electrification, discontinuous, Paisley Canal fashion, and other um, possible uh, innovative technologies. Um, and we are going to um, look in uh, with our Dutch partners at Arnhem, Nijmegen, Els Teel. This is a branch line out of Nijmegen through a rural territory uh, where they want to test a battery train which has already been developed in the UK. It was mentioned yesterday at the workshop um, and uh, potentially also, uh, 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 well, two technologies, one a hybrid from Bombardier and another from Stadler and on this low intensity unelectrified branch line. Uh, and finally, the new uh, appraisal framework, I've mentioned this already, and we would develop that uh, over a year and demonstrate it in regional test cases. This is very relevant to major investment decisions. It's key to uh, our decision on the High Speed 2 uh, uh, new uh, railway in Britain, which has become very controversial, but equally, equally applicable elsewhere. And even beyond Sintrofa Plus, uh, we can see potentials in, uh, the, um, in further work uh, and further conversations to the new generation of EU programs uh, such as um, uh, Horizons 2020. Uh, please here refer to our conference manifesto which is in your pack and which we'll be discussing throughout the day. And finally, finally, uh, here is the contact. Uh, please, during the day, contact Julia directly. She's right here, so why not face to face? Or if you do want to contact her electronically, you can do it this way. But please do contribute during the day to our emerging manifesto, which we shall be um, representing to you at the end of the day. Thank you very much for your attention.